The Steam Deck, which is a portable video game device, has access to a Linux desktop, which begs the question, can we use it for astrophotography? In this video, we will find that out. So what is the Steam Deck? The Steam Deck is a portable video game device that is pretty much like Nintendo's Switch or from the 90s, the Game Boy, although more advanced. For computer gaming, the company Valve created a launcher for their games in 2003, and over time, they became the best online storefront for buying video games. The Steam Deck is their way to make PC gaming portable, allowing access to all games on your account. However, some games might not work well with the controller. On the hardware side of it, ignoring the small screen in some aspects actually better than some laptops in the same price range and worse in a few other ways but what's interesting and what we're here for is that they allowed access to the Linux desktop and added the ability to dual boot into Windows which opens up a ton of possibilities for astrophotography outside of astrophotography some people are even using this as their go-to office workstation when they're working from home. Now, why am I bringing this up? Well, I originally bought it for gaming on the go. I go camping a lot outside of going to star parties and even at star parties waiting around during the day, this gives me something to do. And it's also great for waiting while processing images using PixInsight on my main computer. I let my main computer do its thing and I pick this up and just start playing. But then after tinkering with it, I found out about the customization that can happen and this is why it's being mentioned. If you're an astrophotographer that likes playing video games and you have one or you're playing planning on getting one, here are some things you should know about it. Let's go over the inherent desktop mode. All right, so the Linux desktop does come with some astronomy and astrophotography related applications available for immediate install. If we go into the Discover store and we look under science and engineering, we see that Stellarium is there, which I already have installed. Cyril, which is the free alternative to PixInsight is there. And if we scroll down, there's a bunch of other stuff too. But we can even narrow it down more by just going to astronomy. And there we see that K-Stars is in there, FIPS, which is a FITS image viewer is in there, and a few other things. Because this is a Linux desktop, any program that you can install on Linux can be installed. And yes, that means PixInsight can be installed. Now, one thing I would caution you on is if you are going to be using scripts like the Easy Processing Suite, or WBPP, they will take a long time. So I would hesitate to use those, but if you're just trying to preview what you got the night before, this is perfect for that. I did use Easy Denoise with this once and it kept cool just fine. Uh, I have the little temperature monitor down here. Uh, this thing is designed to where if it gets close to overheating, it will shut itself off. But when it comes to WBPP, use the next method and use Deep Sky Stacker because WBPP takes a very, very long time. And on my last video, when I was out shooting the Seagull Nebula, I was testing with this and it took about four hours and wasn't even halfway. So Deep Sky Stacker ran the exact same stack in 20 minutes. But to go over the next method, let's go over dual booting. Now that we've seen what the Linux side of it can do, we did see that it can't control your setup. So what about controlling your setup? This is where dual booting comes in. Now you can create a USB stick or a micro SD card with a legit copy of Windows installed on it and boot straight into Windows. This allows the installation of things like Nina, APT, and if you're an ASI Air user, you can still use BlueStacks to control the ASI Air until it shows up on the Windows 11 store. On the processing side of things, this is where you would want to install Deep Sky Stacker to take a look at your stack after a night of imaging and if you want to do full processing, you can also install Photoshop. However, you might need to buy another license to install it on both this and your main PC. So take that one under advisement if you want to pay for the extra license that's your call. But real quick, on the Windows side of the desktop here, I am in here and we can see that I have Nina installed. And if I had my gear set up right now, I could control all of it from this gaming device, which is kind of crazy. And then let's say that I ran through using Nina, got some images, and wanted to see what the stack looked like, then I would just pull up Deep Sky Stacker and stack it there. Now from there, I have made a folder on the USB drive for Windows that I can see on the Linux side and I can process it in PixInsight. That way I can see what's going on, but you can do the full process start to finish using this device. Oh, and we see that I have this on red mode, so it's probably hard to see. I have a few tips for you about this, 
But before we get to that, I do have a question for you. What item not designed for astrophotography did you find useful? Let me know down in the comments below. Now you're probably wondering why I brought this up and why use it. Now for astrophotography, this would be on a case by case basis. The purpose of this video is not to say go buy one, especially if you're not a gamer. It's kind of a waste of money if you're not gonna use it. But if you have one, this is just to let you know the possibilities. Now I wouldn't say that this should be your primary imaging device if you don't have a laptop. However, it can be used as a great backup. If you just take a few minutes and get everything set up before going on an astrophotography trip, if something happens to your main device, you have a backup with you. And as I mentioned before, some people are converting and using this as their full on workstation instead of buying a new laptop. And again, on astrophotography trips, this can be a great way just to take a look at your data that you got the night before, before you head home and do a full processing. And then while you're waiting for it to get dark, if say you're at a star party, put a couple games on here that you can play with other people that you've met and have a few rounds at uh, a few multiplayer games. But since this is a full on computer, if all you have is the ASI Air and a Steam Deck, which is the case for me, then it can be a good way to back up your data between nights using something like a portable hard drive. And that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing from now on is every night I will pull everything off of the thumb drive for the ASI Air and put it on this using the Steam Deck. Okay, and a couple quick tips for you, just in case you are going to be using one. Like I said, if you're gonna be stacking using the Steam Deck, do not use weighted batch pre-processing in Pixinsight. Use Deep Sky Stacker. Weighted batch pre-processing, again, will take a very, very long time, but Deep Sky Stacker takes about a half an hour. And one thing you're definitely going to want to do is get a portable monitor. The screen on this thing is very small. The reason I mentioned getting a portable monitor is a portable monitor like this Arizopa one, it's small and compact, and instead of lugging around a big full-size monitor, this can fit in the camera bag in the spot where the laptop goes just fine. And if you're gonna be playing games during the day with other people, it's an easy solution. But one of the bonuses here is that you don't actually have to buy any kind of cellophane or anything like that to make the screen red because the inherent controls for both Windows and the Steam Deck Linux desktop can make the screen very deep red and very dim. That way when you're out controlling your gear, things look nice and dark. Another quick tip is that Valve does sell a dock for the Steam Deck, but it only has three USB plugs on the back. If you're gonna be using it as a portable PC to control your gear or just to take a look at your data, you're gonna need a USB hub. Now, by default, the Steam Deck only has one USB-C plug on the device itself, and then the dock has the three regular USB-A slots. Now, this Anchor one that I have works great with the dock, and it provides power to things that need power, such as the monitor or if you need to charge your phone. And this hub is very useful for other uses, such as just adding more ports to the ASI Air. The last tip I have for you is if you're gonna be using this out for astrophotography, None of this is waterproof, so make sure that you take precautions to protect it from dew. All in all, this is a nifty little device that, like I said, I bought just for leisure, but I found out that it can be a backup to controlling every aspect of astrophotography. So if you have one, give it a shot and see what you come up with. If you found this video helpful, please do like, comment, and then maybe consider subscribing. I wanna thank you for watching. Clear skies.